going on Falcon fan this is your boy Ricundo come back at you with another video so today we're gonna to recap the draft right and give my quick reactions to the draft later on we'll talk about each one of these guys individual and see what they definitely can bring to the team and maybe where they fit it, fit on the depth chart so before we get into that guys go ahead and please subscribe to the channel please hit notification bell so you know when I drop another video please hit the like button so I know you guys like to hear what I talk about then please share my video throughout the YouTube universe so more people can come in and hear me talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So, of course, we're going to start off at number eight overall, um, Drake London. This guy, um, Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year, only eight games. Um, you can see the, the um, potential that he has. I think he's going to be a great blocker. He fixed the schemes well. That's why he was picked over all, the, all those other receivers. Uh, all the other receivers kind of kind of small they was fast and quick um but i think arthur smith like big body receivers i think somebody that he like that can help in the run game being able to block go up and get contested catches being able to play off that play action pass being able to get big catches in the middle of the field and i think somebody like Drake london can do that if you go go back and look at his film you can see where he's hard to bring down and i think the the theme of this whole end draft for this for this team, their vision that they had was to get players that love football and were physical and they were some straight dogs. So that's what I like about um, these guys they got in the draft. Next, you go to number actually 38. We moved up five picks to actually go get Arnold Evan Cady, um, nicknamed AK. This guy here is a, has, a, has a continuous motor that likes to get out to the ball. Um, if you go look at his 2021 sacks, he has nine sacks, 13 tackles for a loss. This guy is all over the place. Coming from Penn State, where they have a tradition of having great linebackers, um, I think it's going to continue with him. I think he could be a still of the draft because some people had him slated to go in the first round, but he went early in the second round. Um, and I think that's going to be a good value for us, beginning on Armour, <coughs> AK from Penn State. Next, you got Troy Anderson. This guy here is probably the most athletic, one of the most athletic players in the draft. Um, played all positions in college at Montana State. Played quarterback, running back, and fullback. Um, his IQ, just just knowing that he played all those positions, um, tells you about his football IQ. Being able to, being able being a quarterback, being able to read defenses. Throwing in the zones and stuff, and run back, understanding the run lanes and things like that, and then switching over to the defensive side of the ball, understanding how it takes for a quarterback and a running back. Um, I think that's going to help him. Still raw, um, but getting him in the room with Rashawn Evans, Deion Jones, Michael Walker, I think that's definitely going to help him um, progress faster. And definitely, I can see him somebody contributing early in, in these um, in this season. Of course, he's going to be on special teams. The dude run a 4-4, big linebacker, 6'4", 244 pounds. Uh, I think that's going to be a good value pick for the Atlanta Falcons here in years to come. Um, our 74 pick overall, Desmond Ritter. Um, I think great value for getting Desmond Ritter in the third round, especially if he ends up being our franchise quarterback. Um, being able to get your franchise quarterback in the third round, um, that's a great value pick. He does not have to get on the field right away. Marcus Mariota is going to be the starter. However, Arthur Smith did say that he has a chance to compete for the starting position. So it's not set in stone that that um, Marcus Mario is the starter. He has to, the the um, head starter course because he is the veteran, and Des Murray got to come in and learn the offense. But we it's good. He's no need no need to read, need, need to pressure this guy. Come in, sit behind Marcus Mariota, and actually learn a pro style offense. All right, next, D'Angelo Malone out of Western Kentucky at pick eighty two. Um, this this young man kind of uh, just a smaller motor of like of AK up at, at number thirty eight. This guy here just has a motor. Undersized pass rusher, but you couldn't tell it if you're watching the film. Um, he said he wanted to buckle to about 250, so he'd be able to take on some of those those bigger tackles and the um, NFL. But his his um, first step getting off the ball is amazing. Uh, 
Um, he was the, the, the player of the year in his conference as well. So if you see the theme, these guys going in and get guys that actually excel at, the, at where they were, came in, older guys, veteran guys that played in college a long time, that has a lot of film on tape. Not something that that um that you think that you may be able to to get out of them. Something that you've seen. So these guys um, ceiling might not be as high, but their floor is great. And if you can just enhance some of the stuff that they do, um, I think it's going to contribute a whole lot to what we, um, what we can actually get out, um, of these guys in this draft class. Next guy, Tyler Algier. If you guys remember, I highlighted him as one of the potential guys that the Falcon could take. So kudos to me on that. Also pick him and Troy Anderson in my mock, my left, my final mock draft for the Falcons to take as well. So, hey, basically, um, the tea leaves was there for both of these guys. Um, like I said, the kind of guys that they want to bring in. We all know about um, Algier, 276 carries, um, almost six over 1600 yards, 23 TDs. He had the most broken tackles <laughs> from from his um. And 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 F is FBS last year, so over fifty broken tackles. This guy here is not going to be brung down by arm tackles. Of course, you know his story. He he was moved. He was drafted as a running back. Um, I mean, recruited as a running back. They moved him over to linebacker. Injuries uh, injuries happened, and they finally brought him back to running back. So he finally got a chance to show what he can do at that position, and I think he excelled. Go back and look at his film. I think he's going to be a bruiser. The question is, with all those running backs in the room, who's going to be on the outside looking in? So, bringing Tyler Algerian in to compete with Mike Davis, Quadra Allison, um, Damian Williams, Cordell Patterson, um, Caleb Huntley. It's deep in that running back room. But um, we're going to see if Tyler Algerian actually pan out and actually makes his team. I think he is going to make it. I think somebody could be out the door. Keep remembering. If you guys remember, I talked about Mike Davis, um, because that could definitely creep up. I think about three million dollars in cap space if they was to cut Mike Davis. I'm not wishing anything on anybody, um, but drafting a young running back, which I thought we need to do anyway, um, is is a big deal, and we'll have to just see what they decide to do with that running back room. Next, we picked Justin Schaefer. Um, out of Georgia, we finally got a Georgia kid. Kudos to the University of Georgia for drafting so many guys. I think they're up to about like 13 players now. Um, 14, I think, if you do pick the two picks that we, we got here with the Falcons. So, 14 players coming out of that national championship football team. This says a lot about the program that Kirby Smart has over there. Uh, let's see, can he keep it up? So, Justin Schaefer. Um, actually, I thought, if you guys watch, I highlighted... Um, Jamar Sawyer, Sawyer, not Jeff and Schaefer. Um, they was right beside each other. Justin Schaefer, though, he is a mauler. The kind of guy that Arthur Smith liked. Um, I think it was a good pick for us because now we can get some competition with Jalen Mayfield. Um, same kind of player. Somebody that loves to got some nastiness to him. But if you go back and look at Justin Schaefer's tape, um, he gets off the ball. He, he when he put his hands on you, he drives you back. So he's a great run, grunt, a great run blocker, just like Jalen Mayfield. Um, has some t has some things that he need to work on in the passing game, being able to get off his technique and things like that. Hopefully, you know, getting around the um, coaching staff and some of the other veterans can help him with that. But um, the only different thing between Justin Schaefer and Jalen Mayfield, uh, Justin Schaefer do have. Um, a whole bunch of snaps at left guard, unlike Jalen Mayfield last year. Jalen Mayfield had played right tackle in college, came over. So, his first time sliding in at that left guard position. So, um, I think this is going to be a great competition for these guys. But that's what you want to see. Um, I'm glad they drafted somebody because we was kind of wondering if they was going to bring somebody in to actually be in competition with Jalen Mayfield. And that's what they did. So, I love that pick. And then to end it off. At pick 213, um, boy, this draft, um, John Fitzpatrick, another Georgia Bulldog. 
Um, actually, probably just a blocking tight end. This guy is 6'7", by 250 50 pounds. Only had like six receptions with Georgia, but he, he was there mainly to do run blocking for the team. I think he's going to fit um, the role that the tight end um, that just retired for us. I can't think of his name right now, but um, he's going to fit that role very well for us. Um that's why we brought him in. So I think now we was talking about picking up tight end. Um, I was thinking about picking up another uh, receiver tight end, but I decided a first skirt. Maybe they don't need that. Um, they do still have Parker Hesse as well. So I think the tight end room is, is solidified right now. Um, John Fitzpatrick still need to work on some of his blocking, but uh, a man 6'7", that size could also be a red zone um, target for Arthur Smith as well. They do, do say he has soft hands. Didn't get a lot of opportunities to actually, you know, catch the ball at Georgia. But um, with a size that big, six seven, that wingspan, um, you definitely could be a target in the red zone. So I love that pick as well. Like I said, guys, I just think that um, Atlanta came in with a vision, a plan that they wanted to do. They executed the plan. Um, this draft, along with the the additions that they added during the offseason, I think they have a good mixture of veterans, young talent to actually progress. And I know a lot of people thinking that the Falcons are going to just sit down and, and take it on the chin this year. I think they're going to be very competitive, going to be in a lot of games, and have a chance to compete. Um, that's all we can ask for from this. The greatest thing about this whole thing is not over yet. Of course, you know, it's a lot of players that's not going to get drafted. So it's an unrestricted, I mean, some undrafted free agents going to be out there. Last year, if you guys remember, the Falcons brought in about 20 undrafted free agents. I'm not sure if they're going to bring in that many, but definitely um, going to bring in some to create more competition. Um, of course, it's not enough it's only 260 picks in the draft, so it's going to be a lot of guys out there that did not get drafted that might have opportunity to come to a team like the Falcons that has a lot of um, positions where guys can come in and actually compete because no position is solidified on this roster. So um, so be on the lookout for see how many um, – undrafted free agents that the Falcons signed. Um, that list should start coming off right after this draft because we should start seeing a lot of those names starting to pop up that the Falcons signed undrafted um, free agents. So just stand by for that. But guys, I really want to know what you guys think about um, this draft class. Like I said, for me, um, I give these guys an A because I think they hit every need that they had. They were strategic. I don't think they reached on any player in this draft um, you could argue about which player we should have took. Maybe we should have took this player us invite that player. But I think the value for each player is there. It fits the scheme that they want to fit because it could be some players out there we thought that probably could have been better, but they may feel like it didn't fit their scheme more than it fit this scheme. Um, just like the quarterback position. Now everybody, Malik Willis was still on the board. Desmond Ritter is a is fits the scheme better because we have Marcus Mariota, the same type of player, come in. Arthur Smith can actually build his offensive game plan in one way. Um, I think Desmond Ritter experienced the whole and all that gave the Atlanta Falcons a little bit more confidence that he can come in and learn faster than somebody like Malik Willis, who may had a higher ceiling, but um, it's all about trying to build a team the right way to win. Um, and if you're all about that, you should be happy about the direction that this team is going in. So at the end of the day, you guys, let me know what you think about the second year of this regime draft. Um, hopefully, we can start looking at last year's draft um, probably next year because it take about three years to kind of figure out if the, the, the draft class is going to be a bust. You, you can't figure that out in one year, guys. So, so everybody thinking Jalen may feel a bust. We got to see what he's going to do this year. Unless he just straight out get beat out by somebody like a Justin Schaefer. Um, that's going to be interesting to see. Um, it's going to be exciting in, in training camp this year for those guys. So, 
just let me know what you think about the draft. Give me your grades. Um, let me know if you 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 grading them. Um, give them an F because they didn't pick any of the guys that you wanted them to pick. Or do you like the direction that this team is going in? And do you think that we can actually be competitive this year? So that's that's all I got. This is your boy Ricundo. Come back at you with another video. Peace.